Welcome everyone to a brand new NASCAR Let's Play. NASCAR The Game 2011 for the Xbox 360. Here's how this season's gonna work. As you can see in the picture, I'm gonna be driving this Mark Martin because he's got some pretty cool ass cars in this game. Let's get this started. Welcome to Career Mode. This is where it all begins, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Okay, let's go over a few things before you wreck. Drafting is a big... Nigga, I know how to draft. Sorry, because the printless game is really big on loading screens, so... Where you need the full 36 race schedule. We're gonna have meet sorry. Ten laps. Standard tire and fuel double pump tire and fuel factor. Tire wear and fuel is gonna be on. Damage is gonna be on full. Bounce and flag is gonna be on. So just like on NASCAR 15, I am not. Just like on NASCAR 3004, I'm going to qualify for each race. I'm going to qualify for each race. Apparently, the Budweiser Shootout and Gatorade Duels do not exist in this game. Apparently, according to you, Technics, the Shootout and Gatorade Duels don't exist. It's just straight to the 500. But. Nice thing about these loading screens is you can just you can just dick around with that thing right there. Pretty much, you just what click the A button, flips, and then it flips again. There are many days and nights where I had spent just dicking around with that while the loading waited. Now my thoughts on this game. I'm not gonna lie, this. The graphics in this game are pretty dope. Look, you, I don't know why each day race looks like it's fucking sunrise. But you can see how crisp the colors look and how the cars are. Anyways, let's get... Let's begin our five-mile track around Daytona International Speedway. It's Mark Martin. Apparently, day races on this game mean every day race has to be in the sunlight. Be it sunrise for some reason. It's like the car just feels really tight going off these corners and stuff. But at least they can hold a straight line down the straightaway, you know? Toy 10 was when they started using the two car tandem. Well, correction, Talladega Fall 2010 was when he started using the two-car drive. Here we go. Get ready. Go get our lap this. Talladega 2010 was when they kind of started, everyone started using the two-car tango. I mean, I remember they, they couldn't do it at Daytona because the old surface was fucking dangerous. Heaven yeah, forbid if you push someone, you'd send them to the fucking wall. You, if you push somebody on the old service at Daytona, you put shove them in the motherfucking wall. So, um, it's so far we're doing pretty good. Going into these corners, I mean, we're clipping. I mean, the track surface even looks pretty realistic, which is pretty cool in this game. Considering that then again, Activision developed it, they know what they're doing with, like, with some franchises, but other franchises they just great. So after the first lap, we've claimed the pole, but fuck it, let's go for two. Yeah, let's go for two. Go for two. Fuck it. Come down the back stretch here. You get five unique camera angles this season. 
on the NASCAR 2011 Let's Play. We make our way through turn three and four. And come down to the unfamiliar Daytona Triable. I, me, a Mark Martin, aka me, has won the Daytona 500 pole. Let's check the top 10 starting grade, just like on NASCAR 100,004. On the front row, we have Mark Martin, the gay me, and then Jeff Burton. Row two, we have Hendrick Motorsports teammates Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon. Row three, we have Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer. Row four, we have Kyle Busch and Juan Pablo Montoya. You know this game's old when you have Juan Montoya in the 42, for God's sake. And then rounding out the top ten, we have Carl Edwards and Kurt Busch. Let's send it up to PRN's Doug Rice and Mark Garrow. Love the presentation in this game, by the way. You'll see it now. Other sports end their season with their biggest game, the championship. In NASCAR, they got the biggest race right at the get-go. Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Garrow at Daytona with Doug Rice getting ready for the big one at the Daytona 500. It's the great American race, and it's produced great finishes. 1976, Petty Pierce. 1979, Allison Harbour. Pace car is in. 10 laps at Daytona. I'm on the pole. The green flag is going to drop on the NASCAR 2011 Let's Play. Hey, we are racing at Daytona. Coming down the Daytona Super Stretch, Jeff Burton got a big push from Jimmy Johnson. As we, Mark Martin, gives, Jeff Burton gives his old Roush teammate a little bit of a shove going into turn three. He's, could he lead the first lap of the NASCAR of the game, 2011 Let's Play, but Burton comes back on the inside with Jimmy Johnson charging him. Looks like Burton's going to lead that lap. Jeff Burton leads lap number one. Me and Jeff Burton are hooked up. We're ready to go. We got Jeff Gordon behind us in third. Our Hendrick Motorsports teammate, our brother from another mother. Oh, a little bit of contact there. Gonna get the slingshot. Side by side as we go down the back stretch. Juan Pablo Montoya gave me a little bit of a push. It's gonna be a good race here. Look, I know how the two-car tango was used, wasn't used to, like, the last restricted plate race of the season at Talladega. But, but in the game, they applied the two-car tango because these cars were made for stuff like that. We do have a little bit of a cushion over Juan Pablo Montoya and Jeff Burton for second. As Juan Pablo Montoya assumes second from him. Oh, shit. Looks like Denny Hamlin is going to be trying to charge the lane on the outside. Juan Pablo Montoya, the jet dryer man, trying to get to me, give me a little bit of a push. He's there in turn three. Oh, shit. That was close. Oh, but a contact between me and Casey Kane. We're about to be three wide. This could be tight. Montoya's going backwards. Thank you, Jeff Gordon. You were a beast. You, you were a beast, Jeff Gordon. Trying to push me to the front here at Daytona. Jeff Gordon, a three-time Daytona 500 winner. But last time he won a Daytona 500 was back in 2000. But he's got Clint Boyer pushing him.
a little bit of three car tango here at Daytona. How about that? Four laps in. Oh, sh a little bit of contact out there. Wow. That was close. Jeff Burton almost wrecks me coming out of turn four. That's pretty effing intense. That was intense. That is to be an epic save right there. Thank God Casey Kane was there because it was about to try to wreck a good chunk of the field. Clint Boyer is the halfway man leading at the Daytona 500. Him and Jeff Gordon are separated. How about AJ Allmendinger? Could he try to get up with his teammate? We're getting a good run on Gordon and Boyer here as we make our way into turn three. Yeah, Gordon and Boyer, they've had history before, if you know what I mean. Oh, there they go. Yeah, this is going to be one of the only times we're going to use rewinds this season. Halfway, the halfway man leading at the Daytona 500, Clint Boyer. So far, we're doing, we're holding pretty steady here in fifth. Here at a, here at Daytona, five car breakaway at the front of the field. That train is being led by Clint Boyer and Jeff Gordon, with Casey Kane, AJ Allmendinger coming up on the inside. It's getting, getting a little tense here. Almanier leaves Casey Kane out to dry. How about that? Clint Boyer getting to, currently fighting for the lead. This could be a side by side battle for the lead here. Casey Kane leads. Casey Kane leads. Clint Boyer. Gordon trying to push me. Thank you, Jeff Gordon. You are a beast. You are the motherfucking beast. We're in the middle. Here comes Carl Edwards trying to push me. Wow, we got a huge head of steam right there. But we got Jeff Gordon coming up. Whoa! Uh, that little bit of contact. We're trapped in a three wide situation. Here comes Kyle Bush up the uh, outside. He fades back. Burton trying to come down with Jeff Gordon. Four laps to go. Oh. Four laps to go. Need to get on that bottom. On the bottom group here. Buzz. Marcus Ambrose and Michael Walter for working together. How about that? David Reagan's up there, and there we go. Caution is out. First one of the Let's Play. Oh, someone was getting hammered. Hammered a little further up, but I can't tell because these angles in this game suck. So the camera angles in this game suck so much cock. Now we're going to be coming from the back. Here we go. Green white checkered. Temp number one. Do we make it around? Kevin Harvick, my brother from another mother, is back down in 29. Wonder what happened to him. I gotta get draft one of these guys here, but we just gotta make it around to the white. The white flag. With Jeff Burton, could he lead and win his first Daytona 500? Contact between Travis Quapple and 
me and Travis Quaffle. But here we go. White flag is out. Final lap for Jeff Burton in the Daytona 500. Or I think that's no, I'm sorry, Casey Kane. Final lap for him. We got a huge run right here. Get a draft off Paul Menard right coming off the back stretch. The slingshot, here we go. Getting all I can. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Up to 14 with my GoDaddy buddy, Dan Kapatrick. But Casey Kane is going to come out of turn four. He can see the finish line. Wow, that was intense. I ended up 16th. As I slide to the inside, hit the pit road wall. I can't run backwards for shit. I'm sucking the wall's dead, man. I mean, wow. Pretty intense racing, so let's look at the top 10. Casey Kane wins the day. Daytona 500 by 8 one-thousandths of a second over Jeff Gordon. Marcus Ambrose finishes third, Carl Edwards fourth, Michael Walter fifth, AJ Allmendinger sixth, Clint Boyer seventh, Jeff Burton eighth, Martin Truex Jr. ninth, and Kyle Busch rounds out the top ten. We just need to make it in the top 12 in points. We are 6th, 15th. We can do it. There's some pretty shocking names down here. One, Denny Hamlin, 41st. But at the same time, I think he may have been part of that caution. That was a fun race. That was a really, really fun race. We're seven points out of the chase. The next race can be Auto Club Speedway for the running the odd. For the running of the Auto Club 500, we'll see you then.